Today we're going to create a P out of a P, a painting out of a picture, no other meanings. And it's going to require three more P's, practice, patience and a pen. Now obviously you can do it with the mouse but then again just keep in mind if you do it with the mouse it's going to take you a lot more time than doing it with a pen and a tablet. Think about it, for example you want to make five strokes so just five times move it fast and you're good to go but if you want to make five strokes with a brush using a mouse every time you need to click we're not going to apply any filter or so we will actually paint all those strokes so we need to have patience we also need a little bit of practice to get used to painting if you're an artist if you're already into it it's going to be an absolute blast for you so without any further ado let's get started Now before we begin, if you just have to take one thing away from this video, it is this. Have a look at it. You're going to work with a lot of brushes today. Have a look at my collection. So if I go to my brush, the regular br brush, and have a look at the collection. Wet media brush, dry media brush, these already come with Photoshop CC. But if I just expand it, have a look. I have a ton of brushes. I have a mega pack. I have art makers. I have watercolor. Now, did I buy all these brushes? Well, technically, yes, but no, because it already comes with Photoshop CC. If you're a CC member, you get all of these brushes and more. And this is how. If you go to the gear icon right here, there's an option, get more brushes. If you click on that, and if you're signed in into your Creative Cloud account, have a look what shows up. So it asks you to sign in to download. I'm already signed in right here, as you can see. So I can download the summer 2018 brushes, the mega pack. This is amazing. So if you're a CC member, just download all of them. Splatter, runny inkers, tons of brushes designed by Kyle Webster, mostly. And these are absolutely amazing. Now, once you download them, you can directly just install it into Photoshop. If you want to know how to install the brushes, check the links in the description. Now let's go ahead and close it. I've already installed the mega pack. So if I open it, now these are the brush, dry media and wet media, which already comes with Photoshop CC, but there are a lot more. So I have mega pack and inside of mega pack, we have a lot of them like erasers, drawing box, ink box, amazing brushes. We're going to be using the real oils inside of mega packs. Once you install them, just keep in mind that you have most of them and it's fine. And you can also work with the brushes that already come with Photoshop, you'll be fine. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is to make a copy of the background layer. We're going to work in a lot of copies. So press Ctrl or Command J with the background layer selected. Next, simply just zoom in. All right, now select a brush. It's inside of wet media. And inside of that, we're going to select real oils 01. Just select that brush. Okay, that's going to open up a mixer brush for you. This is not your regular brush. This is a mixer brush. Now, you cannot just directly paint because it's going to sample the colors. We just want to smudge, right? So let's go back. Make sure this is turned on. Now, what is this you might ask? Just hover over it. It's clean the brush after each stroke. We don't want to take the load of the previous color we stroked with. No, we want to clean it every time after every stroke just make sure that is turned on and make sure this is turned off it is load the brush after each stroke we don't want to load the brush we just want to smudge so make sure this is turned off and this one is turned on so that this area right over there is transparent now once you have made sure that happens you can just simply start painting let's zoom in and just start making small strokes just like this so just keep in mind, if the shade goes in this direction, in this direction, you need to make perpendicular strokes. So it's going from dark to light from there to there. So you need to make strokes in 90 degrees to it. Okay, so you need to make strokes like this. A little bit here and there is okay, but do not make strokes like this. It's going to destroy it. Now you can do whatever you want. That's just my personal suggestion. All right, let's go back. I've destroyed it a lot. All right, now let's zoom in and just simply start with small strokes. Now, wherever you touch, that color will be picked every single time. Just small strokes and you'll be good. Okay, see how the shade is turning up? Now, at this point, it's sampling the hair. So let's go back and I'll just start from here so that it gets only the highlights. 
and covers the hair. Now, the objective here is to make it look like a painting, not make it as realistic as possible. Sometimes we get caught up drawing very fine strokes and when we zoom out, it looks like a picture. We don't want that. We want it to look like a heavily stroked painting. Just keep that in mind. Sometimes it also does help that you work two ways. So instead of making just one stroke at a time just like this, you can just make zigzag strokes and move forward. Sometimes you can also do this. You can leave some space and begin the stroke. For example, as you can see, I left some space because I didn't want to pick those colors. Later, you can match. For example, you started one line from here, just like so. And then, once you finish the line, you just matched these later, just like that, from both the sides, that way. Now make sure to keep your strokes a little random. So this is how we keep on continuing it. Now sometimes what happens is we want to smudge stuff. For example, you were making something, uh, making strokes right here, okay? And then, this is okay, and then you made the brighter stroke here. Now, you wanna merge both of these, you wanna make it soft. How do you do that? Then, I would personally go ahead and select this brush under Mega Pack. just make sure you download that, and inside of that, there is this one, the last one, Kyle's Real Oils Standard Big Canvas. Select that one and just make sure you turn this one on and this one is off. Just make sure it's transparent over there and then just zoom in. Simply just try to make circles over there and match it just like this. To blend better, you can also use this brush, Kyle's Real Oils Rough Bristle. As you can see, it's inside of Real Oils right there, inside of the Mega Pack. So let's go ahead and select the rough bristles this is the one the one with the big canvas the first one and simply all you need to do you need to just turn this on and this one should be off it should be transparent over there and then you can just simply decrease the brush size and then just paint as you can see we can easily use this to merge stuff up let's zoom out and it looks absolutely realistic and authentic because we are actually painting right it should look like a painting. Okay, so that's one of the ways of doing it. Let's just go ahead and go back to our brush, the one that we were using, Kyle's Real Oils 01. This is the one. All right, let's just remove it. And you wanna go back. I didn't wanna just paint there. I just wanted to show you what can be done. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make the video a little fast so that you don't have to just wait around while I do this. It's gonna take you some time. It's gonna take you a little patience. One stroke at a time, just go ahead and practice it. Let's start. Now just a little tip, if you're having any difficulty painting in a certain direction, you can try this. For example, in this case, it's just difficult painting in this direction for me, so I'm just gonna hold R key. So just hold the R key for rotate, do not press it and leave it, hold it and rotate it the way you like and then release the R key, it's gonna get you back to the brush. If accidentally you have pressed the R key, now you're in the rotate tool, you can just press B again to get back to the brush. But the ideal thing to do here is to just hold the R key, rotate it the way you like, and then release it to get back to the brush. Now, if you wanna reset it, hold the R key and click on reset view, it resets it. Let's get back to painting.
Now, just a little instruction. When you try to paint over here, have a look at the eyelashes. So the blacks of the eyelashes will be picked and it will be smudged. So we don't want that to happen. Sometimes we just want to pick our own colors. In that case, let's just go back. And in that case, what you need to do, you need to just turn this on momentarily. So this one is load brush. Okay, so load the brush, just click on that. And then you need to hold the alt or option and then just click on it to take a sample. Now, once you take a sample, you paint whatever you like over there and just you can take samples and paint. So if you really want to do professionally, just like the artist's way, you just take a sample and paint. It's going to take a lot more time, but with practice, it gives you so much more control to pick your own colors. So I'm just going to just turn it off and paint the area where I wanted my own colors and then just get back to smudging. And smudging is a little more practical in this case. So here as well, I want to pick my own color. So I'm just going to turn this on, pick this color and then just paint it. It's going to smudge with the surrounding areas, but it allows you to pick your predominant colors. So it's just like a brush. You will load the brush with that color and then it's going to mix and match with the surrounding colors. I think we are pretty much good over here. So I'm just going to sample a little lighter color, maybe a little more lighter probably let's sample from here and then just paint it's getting a little dark so I'm gonna sample a little white color and just paint over here paint a little bright we're gonna merge it later it's okay just cover this area and then we'll just take care of the rest okay now let's turn this off and then just get back to smudge smudging Just a little note guys, for example, you're painting right here and the shape of the brush is coming in the way. You can press the caps lock to hide the brush momentarily and then continue painting. Now keep in mind, you cannot see the size of the brush, no matter how big you make it, how small you make it, it's just going to show you the plus sign, but it helps you to hide the brush when it gets in the way. Once you're done, once you want to see the brush, you can press the caps lock back again and you're back to it. Just keep that in mind.
Okay, so at this point, while I'm starting to do the hair, I want to have a backup. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a copy of layer one. And to do that, we will press Control or Command J. Now we will work on this copy so that we have the backup just with the skin and, and everything done except for the hair and the background, all right? So we will work on the copy from now on. Now once we have basically done the hair, let's make one more copy which means one more backup and then just let's do the background. So press Ctrl or Command J. So we have layer 1 copy 2. So you can actually go ahead and name it. This one is just going to be for example the portrait or whatever you name it, everything without the head. For example, let's name it portrait and let's name this one portrait with hair. And this one, let's copy it. And this one, hair and background, right? Makes sense. Let's make the B a little bigger. Okay, looks proper. Let's get back to it. So we are pretty much done outlining the background and now I want to make one more last copy just to have a backup if I do something wrong with the background absolutely so we can start we don't have to do the outline all over again so press ctrl or command j again and we can name this final and let's get back to it let's go ahead and try this brush let's see what the landscaper does that's pretty good just I'm gonna turn this on and turn this off Now we are pretty much done with the image. Our job right now is to zoom in and check whether any area is remaining or do we have to give some finishing touches or any area needs corrections. So let's do that. Zoom in and just let's get back to the brush that we were working with. All right, so this one was the one. Let's just collapse that. You don't really need to. And zoom in and just inspect the image. Let's just turn it on, make sure this is off. So as you can see, the painting is absolutely done and this looks stunningly gorgeous. If we zoom in, have a look, each and every stroke looks so much more authentic. And it actually is because we took the time to paint each and every stroke one at a time. So it's going to take a lot of patience. I do agree to that. It's going to take a lot of practice as well. It won't happen the first time. I'm going to be honest with you. It took me, I don't know how many trials, five or six trials to get this right. So it's going to take practice. But once you get used to it, once you get a hang of it, I'm sure you will enjoy doing this, right? So it's going to take a while, but it's absolutely worth it. Now we can stop right here. I would. But if you want to make it more appealing, if you want to make it look like a real old painting, you can take it up a notch. So let's go ahead and make a copy of the final. Press Ctrl or Command J. All right. Now you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it more color and texture. OK, so I'm just naming it for the sake of your understanding. Now you can convert it into a smart object because we're going to be applying some filters to it. OK, simply go to filter and then convert for smart filters. This converts this into a smart object. Hit OK. Now, go to filter and then camera raw filter. Now, inside of camera raw filter, you can do a lot of adjustments that might enhance your image. So you can actually increase clarity and see what it does to the photo. Wow, it does make it the painting-ish. Amazing, right? Let's play with the highlights and let's see what it does. Wow, that looks nice. And maybe what we'll do, is we'll just increase the vibrance just a little bit to add some more color to it, right? Maybe just increase the shadows and see. That's great too. Let's decrease the blacks. 
Wow, that's interesting. And let's play with the exposure. That's okay. Now, once you're done doing this, maybe you can play also with the white balance here. You can make it more warmer or cooler, but I'm gonna leave it at zero. It looks great that way. Hit okay. And anytime you wanna make any change, you can always just double click on the camera raw filter. It's gonna take you back to camera raw and you can see all the sliders are positioned in the same way where we left it, all right? Just hit okay. You can also turn off and on the camera raw to see whether you actually wanted it or not. So this is without it and this is with it. Now to make it look more interesting, you can also choose to add some textures on top of it. So I'm just gonna locate one texture in my finder right here and drag it and drop it over the painting. And let's make it a little big. You can try different blend modes here. You can try overlay. Let's go ahead and choose overlay. Let's see what happens. Yes, this is interesting as well. So let's go ahead and decrease the opacity. This is interesting. You can also choose multiply here. So we can choose, let's go ahead and choose multiply. This is becoming dark, right? So we need to brighten the texture. So we will add a curves adjustment layer right there and we will limit it just to the texture so that only the texture becomes brighter. Okay, so click on the create clipping mask button. It limits it just to the texture. Now take the slider from the right to the left. Okay, that looks interesting. I'm gonna stop right there and have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. It gives the image a little old look. You can choose to have it, you can choose not to have it. That's totally upon you. I'm gonna leave it at that and maybe let's go ahead and add one more curves adjustment layer. Create a curves adjustment layer and then let's just take this slider a little bit to the left to add more brightness to it. And we'll add a little brightness over there, little in the shadows and have a look this begins to look so much more interesting. Also, you can add one more vibrance adjustment layer. You could have done in camera raw, but I'm just adding one on top of everything and increase the vibrance just like so. But it's adding too much saturation to the skin, but it's looking great on the eyes in the background. So what do we do? We can keep it this way and then by selecting the mask, we'll take the brush, the normal one, make sure you select the soft round brush. I know we played with a lot of brushes today. Select the soft round and then just simply paint with black inside the mask. Make sure the flow and opacity is at 100 and just paint with black there on the skin. Hair is fine. Lips are also looking great. But the skin tone is a little disturbed with that. Okay. You don't have to be super accurate in this case. Just make sure you're painting only on the skin. If you want to look at where exactly you are painting, you can also press the backward slash key and red are the areas where you're painting black. Press X to toggle between the foreground and the background. Now let's paint with white on areas we didn't want to paint black in. This is okay. Lips as well. Press X again and let's do it properly. All right, let's press the backward slash key again, backslash. And let's zoom out and have a look. This looks so much more interesting. So this is the before, this is the after with a little color. Now, we totally don't wanna remove the vibrance from the skin. So we will double click on the mask. This should open up the properties. If you have set this to open select and mask, if double clicking here opens select and mask, maybe you have set it that way the first time. In that case, you can just simply select the mask and open up the properties from here and make sure you're in the mask properties. Then you can decrease the density of it so that the mask becomes a little grayish and a little effect passes through. If it's 100, it's completely black as you can see. If it's zero, it's like there is no mask. So we'll just keep on increasing it till the skin looks natural. So you're gonna stay at 52, that's fine. You could have also just scrubbed through so you can select the mask, scrub through the density, that also works. If you wanna fine tune it, you can hold the Alt or Option and it scrubs slowly just a little tip there okay this looks fine or maybe just a little more and there you have it it's all ready let's have a look at the before and after so this is what we started with and have a look at the end and this is our painting so much more amazing isn't it so you can choose to keep it this way or you can add some add-ons and make it look a little old with some color and make it interesting that's absolutely your choice. The main thing is taking a brush, taking some time, and most importantly, taking some patience.
to actually go ahead and practice a little bit and then do it. Maybe you are already a master and you would enjoy this. So just a quick little recap. First of all, download the brushes. If you're a Creative Cloud member, you can just simply open up the gear right here and select get more brushes and download the brushes from the website, Adobe's own website. The CC already comes, Photoshop CC 2018 already comes with, have a look, wet media brushes. This is the one that we used, which Photoshop already comes with, Kyle's Real Oil. We also used a couple of brushes in the mega pack, as I showed you in the beginning of the video. Now, once you download the brushes, let's go ahead and take this brush, which we used the most, Real Oils. Now, once you take the brush, make sure that this one is turned on and this one is turned off because you don't want to load the brush after every single stroke. Also, you want to clean the brush after every single stroke. So this is cleaning the brush. As you can see, if I hover over it, it says clean the brush after every single stroke. So if you click on it, it turns it on and we want to turn this one off. This area should always be transparent unless you want to take a color as we did in the middle. Okay. And then just simply make a copy of it and start painting. So we did the portrait and then we did the hair, then we did the background outline and then we did the final background with a couple of other brushes as well. Now, after you have done painting, you can choose to stop there or add as many effects as you like. You are the artist. So we made a copy of it, converted it into a smart object and then added a camera raw filter, boosted the shadows, added some vibrance, so on and so forth, clarity a little bit and then added a texture on top of it and just adjusted the texture accordingly and then a curves and just boosted the colors a little more by adding a vibrance on top of everything. So there we go. We are ready. We can just go ahead and do a lot more and crop it and maybe extend it. It's a painting. We can just paint out the rest of the areas. It can be fun. So that's how to create, not convert, create a painting out of a photo in Photoshop. I know this is a little hard work, but with practice, you can do it and you would enjoy doing this. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you, all right, ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other feature tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.